So I finally got an interview. And this time it's my boy Frank here. Uh, we didn't really do much introduction in the interview, so I'll do a quick introduction here. Frank is a old time college friend. And he's one of the people that actually got me into podcasting. Not only getting me into podcasting, he was the first person that I actually got live on a podcast. So let's break down how he feels about podcasting and what's going on in his world. All right, let's go. Daddy, man. Shit. What's your am video? I showing man? or am I just audio? You're just audio right now. Okay, that's fine. That's perfect. You doing audio only? Right now, I don't care. I'm not trying to. I don't even know what I'm set up as, really. iPhone. Uh, yeah, I'm iPhone. There's start video. I'm fucking moving, man. There I'll you see. is. Oh, you moving houses? Get, get, getting empty. Now I'm moving to Oklahoma. Oklahoma, easy. Damn, yeah, that's a, a that's a that's a way way back that close to Mississippi. It's it's above Texas, so you're right. You ain't wrong. You're tired of Cali, huh? Outside. Yeah, I'm pretty much tired of Cali, but that ain't the only reason. Uh, I got a job offer from the the seedless homies. The seedless oh, homies, uh, kind of, kind of. It's not seedless, but it's going to be for uh, a, a weed, like a vape, vape company, but they're selling weed, they're selling candy, you know, infused candy and stuff. Hello. But uh, basically, that's the that's the plan, is go out there, work for them, and sell, uh, sell pot legally. <laughs> Legal over there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be selling business to business. Uh, have you heard of Flav? Yes. Like vapes. Yes. All right, that's what I'm going to work for, but in the Oklahoma branch. Ooh, they started nice. in Oklahoma branch about four months ago. And my buddy from Seedless is basically cleaning house. And uh, I happen to call at the right time, and there's an opportune moment so that I can go sell marijuana legally. Ain't that a dream? Yeah, it is a dream. Hey, you know who called me the other day? Who? Oh, J June Pay. Oh, how he doing? He doing all right, man. He's selling houses like a motherfucker. Oh yeah, he's in that real estate. He's selling man. houses now. Yeah, yeah. He knows how to keep up with relationships. He calls pretty often. But he's doing good in that, and I was doing pretty good in uh, car sales. But uh, I'd rather go work for my buddy. <laughs> so <laughs> you still love, at really. the you still at the dealership? No, that's done now. I'm, I've already been out there to Oklahoma. I was out there for two weeks already. Uh, uh, I'm just backpacking. I'm packing the house. I want to go see if I like it and if I fit in there. And I like everybody I was working with. So should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this will be the first time you're leaving Cali in a while? Yeah, since Japan. <laughs> but I've been here since uh, 2003. I visited 2004. I moved here right after Mardi Gras. And then I've been out here except for the two and a half years in Japan. Shit, almost 20 years, 19 years. Damn. Yeah, been out here a while. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I got, I got, I got some stuff planted here, so I gotta be, I gotta be here too. I can't completely leave here. Nah, so it's, it's gonna, be, gonna be like a home base. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Oklahoma, I'm gonna set if I if I can pull it off, set up my sales, and just get like a studio, you know, and like not really invest in nothing until I want to buy a home, which I still may buy there. That way, I can always like use that equity out here. But I don't know if I even want to buy a home out here. Wait, what was that like? We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Huh? I heard like I got these parrots out here. Oh. Yeah, that's these parrots, bro. Those green parrots, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You Maybe, have parrots that used to fly above your house. Yeah, that's fucking up the sound. But that's this is the good view. With the, that is the With good the palm view. trees, baby. With the palm trees back here. So, wait. Where is she going yeah, with we, you? 
Nah, but he'll be out there for uh, Christmas break. We already talked about it. Christmas break, he's coming out there. And uh, we're going to do a week out there. And But I'm coming here for Thanksgiving because mom's going on a on a uh, cruise, really. But I'm going to come out here for Thanksgiving. So I'll be back out here in like three, three and a half weeks. And then after that, he'll be out to see me in three weeks. And uh, it's it's a thing. But sometimes dad's got to go on adventures to make that money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got to get out there and do it. Dad's going to get out there and do it, bro. You know, mom's going to stay right here where it's comfortable. And that's fine. I got to go out there and make this money. Got to go out of the comfort zone. That's right. And uh, I went out there and visited, bro. I, I, if if I had a way to show it to you on here, I probably shouldn't anyway. But uh, I was st- I was stuffing pounds and pounds of weed, like twenty five pound bags of weed. I was a little shovel man, basically. <laughs> I went out there. I went out there working the small guy, like a uh, undercover type shit, just working. You know, just being on the uh, field. Like I was with field hand. I was out there shoveling, p- piling stuff away, doing the field work, and. Uh, the whole time I'm thinking I'm gonna go into sales, bro. I'm watching all these motherfuckers. I'm watching the management. I'm watching the the sales staff, the sales manager. I'm like, dude, I run circles around the sales staff at least. But it's gonna be a different game. But I know the lingo, we people lingo, bro. It ain't, it ain't like I gotta really act any different than other than myself to sell weed stuff. True. True. I think I'm gonna do just fine. I think I was made to sell this shit, bro. Like, I'm, actually, I'm now that you say it that way, I think so too. Because from car salesman, that's like an upgrade. Oh man, like so, car salesman, you're getting zero respect in the street. <laughs> you tell a girl you got a car sales job, man. She's like, okay, this guy's gonna be a slickster. He's got some money, <laughs> but everybody told me not to date this kind of guy. You know, that type of shit, bro. Like, you're getting that out in the street. But I got to where I was selling good, bro. I I, I got used to a whole new uh, tax bracket this year. Uh, from selling and, uh, so, so this one, it's going to be a pay cut at first, but I see larger potential because the sales are residual. And that's the ticket. Mm. Car sales. You buy one car, I might not see you for three months, three years. 10 years. years, yeah, you know, like I don't know you, you might wreck a car, maybe you come back, maybe you want a completely different car, you know. <laughs> it's like, fuck mm-hmm. this car, I'm getting something else. I have had someone come back to Honda, never to Kia. Nobody ever That's came good. back, to Kia. nobody ever came back to buy another Kia for me, not one, not one motherfucker has ever come back. But you know what, I like that Kia. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind, that's a lie. This one lady, uh, and her husband, she. She kept coming back to buy Kia Rio, the roll-up windows, because she'd drive them until they die. Ah, oh, damn, I caught another lot. So this one old lady used to come buy their, her grandchildren more souls once she once they became old enough. Uh-huh. She'd give them her Kia soul, and then she'd come buy herself a brand-new upgrade. Ooh, like, the third, grandki- the third grandkid ended up with, like, a great, like, top of the line one probably hated it because it was a soul but it's like the most expensive <laughs> kia soul you could ever get <laughs> but they still hated it <laughs> it's all principle it's like damn that's a kia it's like a fifty thousand dollars kia soul bro you better be careful between kia and hondas which one did you like selling the most honda why they sold the most they sold themselves the most and more, most importantly, I made a lot more money selling Honda. But you don't get hired at Honda right away. You got to be kind of a seasoned vet because uh-huh. it's not easy to it's not easy to sell Honda. They do sell themselves, but those people know what they're doing. They're usually educated, and they're typically buying like a Honda Accord for their daughter. You know, like a safe car that's going to last, or the Civic for their son and that they can pass on to kid to kid. And then there's a few people that just kind of upgrade with their family. You know, they had a little CRV for when they had a kid and get the pilot. Rarely is anybody there to buy the Honda Ridgeline. Hmm. The truck. The truck, right? Yeah, nobody buys that. Nobody wants that car. Huh. But uh, but I want one actually. Like I don't like nobody really just reads the specs. Everybody wants a Tacoma. Mm-hmm. I, I have a I have a forerunner, so I ain't eating on Tacoma or Toyota, but uh, the Tacoma everybody's got one. You know, they're everywhere. They're like everywhere. 
So the ridge line, now that they fixed their body shape from having that avalanche look and the stupid ass little front end that looked like a car, now they got now they got a truck that looks like a truck in the front and not just a car. Huh, I have to look at the new ridge line then. My man walked by with the belly up. Like belly strong. <laughs> he came by with the belly strong. That's my neighbor. I'm I'm surrounded by you've been over here though. Yeah. Where you at now? I am in Tokyo, Japan. Fuchu Japan. Tokyo. It is shy must say. I uh I am jealous. I would like to be in Japan. I know, I know, I know. You are one person that actually likes this place. Yeah, but that's because I go see my family, you know? Mm. When I go, I go see family. So it's not like, like everybody else trying to, like, they go for this whole whole experience that they expect, and it's just a big-ass <laughs> letdown because everybody built it up. You know, that's <laughs> actually the funniest thing. Because <laughs> for me, I never had any expectations for Japan. I just was like, all right, Japan, Japan. It's another country, you know, boom, boom, boom. Right. But like when I get here, I'm like, all right, it's, it's everything I expected it to be. It's another place with their own sets of problems. But when I meet yeah, people, yeah, yeah. once like, you get down, down deep, yeah, you find that shit out deep. Yeah, yeah, but when people come, they're like, oh, man, I'm this. I want to see that. And then they don't see it, and their hearts get broken. Oh, yeah. It's most pleasurable. It's thing. real. <laughs> it's real. I've been going there since I was two, man. My stepmom had me hating that place. I I had I loved it because it was like going home in a mm. second, like like a second home. Like that, I did get that feeling from being there. Mm-hmm, I was strictly mm-hmm. there in Tokyo doing, like, family shit. Like, and then I was with my dad. I was with my sister. I was going either with my dad or my stepmom, you know, out and about in Tokyo. And it's the same old shit from when I was a kid, you know. So I didn't have any big expectations. But I'd go talk to, like, military people all, you know, all night in the bar area. And they'd, they'd kind of tell me about that that moment when they're like fuck this place <laughs> like fuck man i'm over they're like would you ever why do you why are you visiting i'm like i'm visiting family <laughs> you're trying to live here i'm like not trying to live there bro and that's not not my plan man and like all the kids that i know you know they're learning japanese go live there and stuff some of them pulled it off some of them you know failed completely and fucking some never even tried uh, i know so, a lot that didn't try I think I only know one person that actually lived there, and that's Christina. Right, right. She succeeded. Did she ever? She's still there, yeah. I think so. I've, I've, I've I know she came anymore. back. She came back last summer. We went over to Amy's house. Amy was always cool. She's beautiful as ever. And then uh, what was it? Morgan. She was there, and a bunch of other people from like Convoy were there. And I remember, like, seeing them up there whenever I hung out with them. It was pretty cool because I hadn't seen them in a while. Christina, she actually came and visited me while I was in Japan. One of out of, you know, however many people, her and Kaida, that was about it, that pulled that off. So she she's the homie. But uh, I haven't heard from her in a while. But uh, she's, I'm pretty sure she's still there. She is gung-ho on making it happen. And she's the only one that really it pulled happen. it off. Yep. Yeah. And that's tight, man. That was her dream, and she made it happen. She she was the one I really believed would from the beginning. That she'd already been there and shit. She went and helped tsunami victims and stuff. So she's a good kid, good little lady. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good for her. I hope she's happy. Oh, that she's one dude, happy. I don't know about. I don't know about that one dude, bro. He's kind of who? Yeah, he, he had some odd vibes. Whoever she was with, that dude she was with over there back in the days. But, She's still with him, and like her mom, I don't know. I'm giving too much her business. Never mind. Like that dude's mom's hating on her pretty much. Huh. But uh, she really made it. She's over in Japan because he's like, you know, he's really Japanese, so he's there. Mm. So she marries him. She's set, and she can be there. Mm. But they got their issues. Because I think he's got some money. I think his family's got some money. So. 
Mm-hmm. But she was talking about he's giving her some grief about that. My dad's yeah. bought a new home in Tokyo, like the Tama Hills area. Nice. It's tight. Yeah, it's tight. So, you know, some motherfuckers go over there and make it. Like my dad, he made it. He made it over there. He's on his third wife, but, you know, <laughs> he made it. Third Japanese one, anyway. Maybe his fourth time, my mom. He liked him Asian when he stayed. You just got to do what you got to do, right? Hey, I love the Asian women, too. I love the, the few. I think Kai is the only real girlfriend I had. Other than that, it's like two girls I talked to in the bars and shit, you know? Yeah. Just from around the way. It's starting to get dark out here. What are time you, are you actually there? looking for a girl? No. Especially not right now. Now that I'm making this move, like I've had a few girls here and there and I have some friends that I call when I need to keep my engine clean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> keep it pumping, keep that heart moving. <laughs> get that good get that good love. <laughs> they know where to holler. But uh you know, maybe forget what I was talking about. <laughs> I started thinking about them women. Better calm down. But no, when I go to Oklahoma, I heard what I'm supposed to do is find like a thick Indian woman. That's what they said. Indian? Like real Native American. Oh, okay. Native American Indian. Huh. There's all Indian stuff out there. I was out there talking about Indian taco, this, all kind of Indian dish, different shit. Uh, the first weekend I was there, there was the Tulsa State Fair. So the Oklahoma State Fair. It was in Tulsa. And uh, I got to say, that place was huge. It was bigger than the San Diego event that we call, you really? know, Del Mar. Uh-huh. Bigger, like huge, humongous. Uh, so you got it, and like the women, okay. So California women, we have some of the best looking, made up women in the world. You know, they look great. They mm-hmm. know how to dress. They got that pop. They got that flair. But these country girls, bro, they got some cowgirl fucking tight jeans on, them boots. They clearly know how to ride this horse over here. It's kind of intimidating because they're, they're standing next to, like, five dudes dressed up. But they didn't give a fuck about those guys. Their pants are hiked up too high to matter. <laughs> in, my, in my arena, anyway, as soon as they find out, <laughs> they have pounded them balls down with that goddamn saddle. Better calm down, bro. <laughs> uh, bro you, you ain't catching me on no Bronco, bro. That's <laughs> Hell no. Nah. What about you? You, get, you do all? Would you do that Bronco walk, bucket on a horse? Nah. That's scary. Nah. Do I it, feel what, like I have bull? big problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not caught up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't need to do anything extra with my dick, bro. I ain't wearing no extra underwear, no extra padding. Like if it's that kind of sport, I'm out. It's like what the fuck? Like you could injure your balls in this. Nah, there's too much mass to work with right now, you know. It's a very you're high... a, <laughs> Yeah, you're saying a cup can't handle this situation, then I'm out. I'm not involved in your sport. Like, no. I'm just I'll watch. Yeah. I'll, I'll, watch. Watch. I'll watch. I'll comment. Yeah, I'll watch. You know. I could do the so music I, I, course, but and I'm gonna laugh too. Oh yeah. I'm not point. You can't you can't laugh and not point. That's as rude. You got you gotta share with the people. You got to this share. This is what with I'm laughing people. at. That right there. <laughs> That's what I'm laughing at. Look, if you're just laughing like people looking at you like they're missing. They're missing. If I'm pointing and I'm laughing, look at where I'm pointing, not at me. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge me. I'm sharing. <laughs> Right. Not a Karen kind of way. Okay, Not a Karen kind of way. Me. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Speaking of podcasting, what was the last time you guys did Uneducated Opinion? Oh, boy. I mean, probably last time you did one, you know, about the same timeline. Really? Uh, Ross got married. Nina moved off to Utah. Utah He's living right? some kind of extra country shit even before I did. And now I'm ready for my country adventure, bro. I'm so ready. So ready for my country adventure. So I have right. a few people. Uh-huh. Like, there's a guy right there, right over there uh-huh. that I'd like to interview because he's just, he's just, 
I can't describe him without being offensive, but I love him, so I can't describe him. But if I put him on camera, he'd go viral. And if I could just interview him about blood, blood gang things, you know, just, uh-huh. <laughs> just anything. Or not even. I don't want to get him shot. So I mean, I, that's usually what I hear him laughing about. But I can, I can make him. I can make him talk about some other shit. It'd be funny. Whatever his perspective is, is funny. So you never know who, who or when is gonna drag me back in for a. Uh, I feel like what projects are better than like a full time podcast, where yeah. you can like you know you tell a story like a nine episode story, three episode story, and just have like some you know clips that go out but still be it could be a 15 minute interview it doesn't have to be no hour-long podcast anymore no or it could be broken down even further especially with these youtube shorts like all you really need is that hot minute man that's like for me that's the like hardest part right there yeah trying to map those out was my hardest part of doing uneducated opinions Because I was trying to time it to where we could have three, four laughs in a minute. But, you know, we get off tangent. It's hard to keep it. It's hard to write and keep up with writing like an episode, too. Uh, Writing is the hardest part. Well, it's not hard. Like It's not hard. It could take 10 fucking seconds. Yeah, the structure. You also need to have like a few sticks where you do it every show, you know? Like we always gave somebody the bird. And uh, you just have these moments like The Daily Show and all these other shows, they have like multiple of them. And whichever one hits, that's when they redo it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when they redo like... like, Little mini, mini sections in it? Or like, yeah, exactly. There's sections in your show, just like on that one show here in San Diego, War of the Roses. Everybody knows War of the Roses. Mm -hmm. Like you even stop and listen to it. Like, you know, it's like, dude, don't do it. (laughs) Don't Don't do it. Send the flowers. Like... (laughs) Send it to your girlfriend. Have you not heard of this? And some dude out there fucking falls for it, just moved to San Diego and goes, Oh yeah, I guess that's a good idea. And now all of a sudden he's sending Mandy and fucking Sandy's on the phone over here. She's getting Mandy. Goes, Who's Mandy? What are you sending these girls flowers for? Oh babe, that's just the girl, you know, I went to high school with. She's making me feel good about myself again. <laughs> you know, talking to her about work. And, uh, it's nothing. You don't have to worry, babe. It's nothing. And like to hear them try is fucking hilarious. But it is part of their show. And they say mm-hmm. I, I actually talked to them, the two that do it. Mm-hmm. They came to the dealership because we uh basically the owner advertised like Team Kia of El Cajon. He's on ninety two point five. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she basically it's two. It's a it's a husband and wife basically. <laughs> fucking up Jagger and Christy. Yeah. And basically they really make these calls and like it takes hours sometimes and they finally get somebody that fucking does it. And it's like, how do you get the person on that? Cause I didn't, I'm skeptical. I don't like, how do you get the lady? And then you call some dude, like how, how, like, it just doesn't make sense in some of the situations, but they're like, we can't hire actors to act that good. I was like, I guess that makes sense. Y'all just got to really try to get a genuine fucking response but jesus <laughs> seems like a lot of work that yeah but that now that they've had it like a lot of work now that they've had it set up for a while they get enough girls calling in or guys calling in try to catch the other one that they can really okay we're gonna try this for an hour this day and make so many phone calls and if it works it works they can always replay because they have so many that they've done over the years so they don't have to do like a brand new one every week is what they broke down to me. It's like we we try to get them, and it's a consistent battle to get them. But it does. It, they're all genuine. Huh. So if you come up with a genuine stick that the public just loves, you got to do it every episode. It's kind of thing, and then you want to do it consistently. So until you do know that the public likes it, you just got to keep coming up with sticks. Like every you know five minutes. All right, today we're gonna do. Who gets the bird, bro? Like, who pissed you off today? So, you know, this motherfucker cut me off in traffic. He's got to go, bro. Like, I'm getting him double bird. Or, you know, Joe Biden. Gas prices are getting the bird. Yeah. Hmm. Whoever. I have to to figure out what mine is going to be. 
yeah, you got to figure that out. Maybe travel corner, Tokyo corner, shit. You like, I see a lot of TikToks in fucking Japan about shit that I saw all the time. Like, I can't believe this is a fucking popular TikTok. Like, I just can't even believe it. Sometimes it's like just things you should know about Japan. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> this is like ABC shit right here. Yeah, so you know more about Japan than these people on TikTok, bro. Just do some. Just I think the do, laziness do some... has got me. The laziness, yeah. the laziness has got me. Like the I have too many other adding. things to worry about. Like I'm learning the language. I never liked Japanese, the language. You know. Okay. I was more into Chinese. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Studying most of the day, I'm studying. Like right now, I'm doing hiragana. Okay, he the gonna buzz it down. You know, so I can do the yeah. I E U E O all the way to Ya Yu Yo. You know. A I U E O Ka Hi Ke Ko Sa Chi Su Te So Ta Chi Tu Te To Nani Nu Ne No Ha Hi Fu He Ho Mami Mu Me Mo Rari Ru What Ya Yu Yo Ya Yu Yo Rari Ru Ru Ya Yu Yo Then it's Rari Ru De Ro And then why? Well, mm -mm. Yep. I still have that shit, boy. It's in my head. It's in my head, boy. I ain't have nothing in front of me. But, yeah. uh, you know, I was there when I was a child, so it is what it is. Yeah, so that's where I just focus most of my energy on, practicing that, writing, reading, understanding the grammar, because everything is spoken backwards, kind of. Yes, the sentence structures go backwards. That is a fact. So, and that sucks. Yeah, that's for the sucks. English speaker. Yeah, for the English cause... speaker mostly because like Spanish speakers already have that. Hmm. Did I know that? They also conjugate like Japanese do. You know, I'm, that's another thing that's a bitch is conjugation of verbs, yeah. and then the sentence structures with the pro with the with this you know with the what what are they the pronoun markers or whatever the markers whatever they are markers particle markers. Particles, conjugations, the gods, the was, the nas, the hoes, the yeah. the counters, the counters. Like if something's flat, it gets a different counter. If it's a book, yeah. it's on. If, if it's, it's a fucking double, stick, it's a my. Yeah. yeah, or the little when they put the, the counter wa next to like the q, right. so it's it's a different sound. So there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. So. I think I've been putting lot. most of my energy on that. And I like the, the podcast, the way I have the podcast set up now is just more catching up with people. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tight, though. That's tight. You can get some gems like that, too. Then I you put know, you never know. story to it. Then I'm like, boom, done. The next one comes out. Another person that I haven't talked to in a while, you know, till I actually find, like, and this way, I can just put everything in like a nice story, like all oh, that is one series. Then I go to now one day we'll love that. Huh? People appreciate that in the long run. Like we we're all kind of fucking selfish and vain, right, and narcissistic. So like everybody just wants to be able to, you know, find an interview with fucking them on the fucking internet. Pretty much what this is. It's like a kind of an interview because you get like what Charleston White and like Yayo all over your fucking feed right now because of fucking uh, the people doing interviews and they're funny and people you know interested in what they got to say. Us personally, maybe ain't nobody trying to listen to Frankie Fortunato right now, but I will look back at him like, hey, that's dope. <laughs> that's all that matters. That'll be me. Dang, I got the red dot on me. Who the fuck red dot? Dang, I seen you. Somebody want to try oh to snipe you? They got me. They had me pinned up. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my door now. They're funny. I'm surprised I don't get it on the phone. They're up there in the corner somewhere. I better, I better record them in case they shoot me. You know what I mean? That bang. Damn. That was fucked up. I get John F. Kennedy right here. Uh, no, not on your balcony, man. Not on your dang. balcony, man. Oh, dang. That's some Abraham Lincoln <laughs> shit. Come on. I'm trying. I am watching my TV through the wall. I got it on MTV. You know, that's all it shows ridiculousness. Oh, ridiculousness. That's just funny. Is still, wait, it's that's still a, going? 
Yeah, that's all they show. It's ridiculous. It's replays that Rob Deerdeck is probably paid just from that, bro. Just for, I guess, 24 7. All I ever see when I turn on MTV is Rob Deerdeck's fucking ridiculousness. Damn. That girl and that dude sitting on that couch, they're getting paid just to fucking flip through videos. Is it and the laugh. same people? Same people. Same three. Huh. Same three. And you know what? It's still funny. Like, I don't have the sound on or nothing, so it's just perfect. I'm it's sitting like, there looking at people bust their ass. It's like old school America home videos. How you watching TV over there? You watching Japanese variety TV shows and shit? Yeah. Those yeah. motherfuckers are funny. So you might have an advantage there because, like, so you, you're still studying the reading and shit, but the speaking's got to be there, yeah? Mm, yeah, like you're pretty good. You're pretty good, but you're listening though. You're you're, you're hearing shit. So if you're there studying, people pay money for that shit. So you know. Oh, uh, studying. Yeah, well, just to be there for one and to study, in order to be able to learn the language, you really need to be there. So you are at you are at an advantageous advantageous situation. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, so actually, <laughs> they I mean. feel like that because it's like people do want to come here. People, oh yeah, people there really are people do. that's people like paid. infatuated with this place. So paid. my man, I look like I'm balding. My bullshit, I ain't balding that much, man. I got a big ass forehead. <laughs> <laughs> people really do want to go there, though. They aspire to go to Japan. Absolutely. Like, that's like a lifelong dream for some people. And then it's just, you know, like somewhere people want to go to. And they're very curious about it. So I, anytime I say I've been there, people ask, like, what I thought. Like, as a visitor, fuck, it's chill, bro. You, you're there for a week or two, two yeah. weeks. You're going to have a good time. You try to live and work there. Uh, it's a different awful, story, man. Uh, it's not as easy. But if you're living here, especially at this point of time where the dollar is beating us to the ground. So if I'm a traveler from here with dollars, I'm living good right now. You're living good. It's like one. That's what I heard. You're living That's what good. I heard. So you get like double your money or actually 1.5. So of if you're your making, money. if you're making yen living overseas, you're fucking sad right now. You're sad. You want to cry, you know. You That's wanna, crazy. Want to cry, cry, because right now it is brutal and everything is like slowly going up. But it's funny when you still calculate it based on dollars, like I do. I feel like everything is super cheap because first of all, ten dollars right now is like six dollars. So when I look at the price, it's like I'm paying. Six dollars, five dollars for something that's ten dollars here. So it's a good time for people to come. And my roommates, my old roommate, he's actually planning on visiting in um January, his first time. And he has like a lot of expectations. So I want to see how that goes down. I'm actually going to that'll be interesting. That'll yeah. be interesting. Document that shit. Yeah. Until he looks at you that day and be like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Although I had it good, man. I never had any real problems. So I can't really say that, but I witnessed it. I seen the racial shit that could happen too. And then just them like, you're a foreigner. Like, I didn't never care. Yeah. I didn't same. live there. Same. I knew it. So I was like, whatever. I don't care. I don't fucking want to be here. I'm here to see my sister. I'm I'm having fun. I don't give a fuck. So what? I'm in a Yukata. Baka Gaijin. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Let's see. Let's see what you're going to do about it. Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. Nothing. You're going to sit goddamn over there and say your dumb shit and do nothing about it. And meanwhile, I'm going to snatch up like your older sister and fucking just take her to the bar and laugh at you while you're out there in the street. We're going to go to the sake tent, homeboy. Have a good time. Yeah. I didn't know you were supposed to sip those boxes, bro. I used to just take those sake boxes down. And boom. Oh, <laughs> it's this big-ass thing of sake. You're supposed to sip them, yeah. Oh, I thought it you, was a you, shot, like a challenge. No, bro. 
<laughs> oh man, good looks, good looks. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went to a wedding there. the other day and they brought them and I'm like Boom. I'm fucking everybody laughs. They're like, damn. I was like, Yeah, it's a shot. You do it too, and they did it too. And they're like, Yeah, fucking all right, good. So I didn't feel so weird, but somebody sent me a uh like a it was like a reel earlier. It's like, hey man. If I go out with you and you get like completely shit faced, I... it is my responsibility to immediately, as fast as possible, get just as shit faced as you, so that you're not the only one. That way, when people come at you tomorrow and be like, "Hey, you were fucked up last night," it won't just be you. It'd be, "Hey, we were fucked up last night." Don't worry, bro. I won't let you be an asshole alone, man. Yeah, I saw that. That was great. That, that was a good one. That was yeah, that was a good one. Did I quote it pretty good? Huh? Yeah, you kind of quoted him verbatim. <laughs> it was close, man. It was, it was pretty damn close, man. But uh, that was a good one, man. I liked it. I got that one sent to me today. But yeah, Oklahoma, bro. Okay. This is uh, this is crazy. When like my house is empty. Huh? When are you planning on leaving? Monday. Oh shit. Yeah. Like Monday, like yeah, yeah, yeah. This week, Monday, hey, the first. You you've been in this. You've been in my place, right? Yeah. Like this place is on the verge of being empty, bro. Like I'm shutting it down. Wow. It's a. Uh, it's it's the, I've been here five years this month, and uh, I'm I'm in the middle of packing it right now. I ain't lying to you. I'm packing, and uh, all my bags are ready to rock. And then I'm basically gonna load my forerunner up with uh, gear that I need immediately, uh-huh. and I'm gonna uh, just ship it out there on its own. That way I don't have to get in a U-Haul and haul it. I can just fucking give away the shit that I can rebuy over there. So I'm essentially gonna be living cheaper, and eventually making the same money. Once everything settled down and gets right, and then possibly more, because I got another line on another uh, just phone call, like a phone thing from my buddy that that's like a, making a million dollars. I think he just needs like people to give money to for a tax write off. So I might <laughs> I might have a second job just doing nothing, <laughs> just fucking. Like, yeah, he, I work for him. <laughs> if that's the case. I'll be a really happy man. But I'm sure I got to do some phone call work or responding, some type of customer service shit, something like that. But uh, my other buddy's doing He's getting $5,000 a month. And he's like, I do like two hours of work a day. And I'm like, bro, like I'm, I, the, the guy above him already told me I'm in. So if that's all I have to do for five grand a month, I don't care what I'm doing at the other job. Like, I'll just be fucking taking that extra money. Yup. So I, I have high hope. cash. High hopes for it. I, I see myself going up to 10K next year, 10K a month again, because I got used to that 10K a month money, bro. That's when your life changes, you know, consistently. Like, I did 10K a few times with car sales in the past, but once you get to doing 10K a month every month, you get used to spending that money, and it's all gone real quick, just the same as when you were broke. Like, <laughs> man, what the fuck? So you're talking about how car sales is dead. So car sales isn't dead, dead. There are plenty of winners right now in that game, especially the people that sold in the 90s and the 80s and the early 2000s because they're managers now. And also the slick people that work their way up. I know plenty of smart, smart guys that made up there as youngin. And, uh, yeah, they're getting into the phone this time. They're funny. I have no idea who they are. Like, <laughs> I don't know who they are. But uh, essentially, those guys are winning. But the regular salesmen, that that those particular people are kind of at war with the salesmen. Uh, I see. Some, good now. Some, yeah, they're really getting at it now. They're like, they're all about it now. But uh, some of the car dealerships have the have changed the pay plan to where you're just working flats. And working flats means like you get paid an hourly of what fifteen an hour. And then you every first out of the first eight cars you say, for example, for example, the first eight cars you sell, you get fifty bucks per car. Okay. So you really only make four hundred dollars for selling eight cars. However, you did make your hourly rate, which will add up to about twenty seven hundred dollars. So you sold eight cars and made thirty one hundred bucks. Maybe some bonus money bring you up to thirty five. Four thousand if you're lucky for eight cars. 
Is that a good deal? For somebody that knows how to sell cars, no. And for somebody just started off in the game, sure, great deal. Like you just kind of took orders. You were nervous the whole time, sure, but you didn't make it. A, you didn't make it a show. You know, you didn't make it an event for the people. They're not going to remember it as it's a great time that you provided for them, whatever. Years down the line, that's when you're providing that, and people don't mind coming back to you. And then also, they trust you, and that's when you make the money because they trust you. And you're like, yeah, 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 this is a good deal. And they're like, oh, okay. So at that point, that's when you're making the good deal. But some of these dealerships are are ripping people off, and then now that the cars have been marked up for over two years now, they've been marked up. I was making great money with those marked up cars. Now these cars are selling for MSRP again and the salesmen for the commission work are hurting. Mm. So it might even be better to be back at the, the flat rate. The flat rates where you guys get what you get. Yeah. Cause when you're full commission, and that sells at MSRP and you didn't sell any back end or anything like that, you could have just made $100. So if you sell eight cars at $100, you only made $800. Whereas if you were at the flat store, you just still made your hourly plus that weak ass money and still come out better than that mm. particular car. Sold. So it's a risky game, you know, 100% commission. What I'm going to go do next, they're talking about making 100% commission, but, I feel like that motivates the sales. And if you got an hourly and you're just kind of flop, floating around, you're not going to do anything extra. You know, yeah. you're going to get, get to a comfortable point and be like, bam, bro, that's all I got to do. I got my store set up. They're going to do some residual income orders. And then I just get my hourly rate and just work from home and claim hours and just not do shit. So that's what I heard was happening with this other sales team. They got 60 out of 900 possible stores in the state. I'm going to go there and rake up about, and they're living good off of those 60. They didn't have to work that much. So I'm going to go get like two, 300 of those 900. I could, I could just get a studio apartment, get, get a studio apartment there and here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was fucking, and then work that other job, making that, making that five grand a month. I could pay both rents with that. <laughs> and travel and then live off of whatever I make from this sales. And I foresee 10 to 15. I see, I see it happening, bro. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Possibly 20. I heard this one lady making 15, 20, just selling, just fit, selling vape pens. Bro. Once you get all these stores <laughs> set up and yeah. it's just residual income and you, yeah. you got the relationship set. Oh, bro. There's potential here. Do you think Japan will ever have will will be ever legal here? No. Why? They would relinquish just too much control there. They just they just years and years of beat down lies about it being so fucking bad for you. They would never want to have to like face that. I feel like they need it though. <laughs> You know, it helped him out so much. The Japanese people? Yeah. I agree, yes. And the guys that need it the most would never agree to it. That's the problem. That's the problem right there. Those old, like, stuck in their way motherfuckers that with the tie screw up their ass, those are the guys yeah. that needed that to, like, take all the pressure on their head away. By Camus. Yeah, it's got them uh, the SD the SD uh, pinstripes. Oh, nice! At least we beat. At least we beat LA, bro. Nah, that was the, that was the shit. At that least we beat LA for, for your leaving uh, San Diego. Yeah, that that was pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, I was actually in Oklahoma when they did it. <laughs> really, you wasn't even in San Diego. I wasn't. My kid's mom was at the game. It was all raining and shit. So I got to, like, kind of see and hear about it firsthand, but I was gone. I was already over there working. Nice. I went over there on a whim just to just to see my friends, really. It's like a, a kind of a mental kind of thing. And uh, I was really happy to see my friends because everybody done spread across the world, you know? Yeah. My two my – two, Best buddies from since I first came to California. They live. They both live there now. 
Really? So, um, let me guess. I think I know one of them. Oh, you do. You do. Uh, what's yes. his name again? Uh, it starts with an R, right? Yeah. But you know the other one more because he he labeled uh, what's his name, Black Germ. Oh, Triggy. Yeah, Trey. He labeled Trey Black German, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what was that? Yeah, that's, that's the one stay with in the that's, tattoo guy. Yeah, that's Kellen, yeah. Kellen, 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 yeah. Yeah, he did, he did this whole arm. Look at it, it's all dark. This is like a big dark arm, man. <laughs> How's he yeah. doing? I haven't heard of him in a minute. He's living there. He's going to be like the running the running part of the lab over there, like running the warehouse, shipping part of it, and uh, just different angles of it. Oh, He's there. Okay. I was staying in his guest house whenever I went over there. And then, uh, you know, we went over to see Rez when we, we needed to. Rez is the other homie's name. Yeah, Rez. He owns part of Seedless. Oh. And that, that whole story. But essentially, I'll be kicking with them and working with them. And at first, I'll still be a field hand. Like, I'm just going to go out there, work the field, learn the uh, stuff from the ground up, like go in the lab and work my way up. That way I know all, all about the product, at least, whenever people ask me about it, how we make it, what, what, you know, learn some lingo, essentially, you know, about vapes and stuff. Because I never really bought a bunch of vapes. I don't know much about candies, milligrams, what, what's supposed to be strong, hard for you, bad for you, whatever. I know, like, 250 is a lot. I know 1,000 is a lot, you know. <laughs> but yeah. there's still a lot to learn, and that's pretty exciting, actually. So would you consider this your your dream adventure? No. But it's going to be a good adventure. Wouldn't be my dream adventure. What would I might, be uh, adventure? Oh, fuck, man. I might I might be adventured out, bro. Like, <laughs> I'll go on some mini vacay adventures. But, it, like, whenever I think adventure, like, I did a two-and-a-half-year adventure that I don't, I don't plan on repeating nothing that crazy. But this will be... An adventure, it should, yeah, I guess I should see this as an adventure. It is hitting the road and going and risking it all, you know, packing up all your shit and going. And I'm going to go work for a weed company. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, this is kind of a dream adventure. It's pretty tight, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my bad, yeah, it is my dream adventure. It's pretty cool. I apologize for fucking up your question. <laughs> hey, at least you, you got to realize it yourself, you know? Yeah, you know, I just had to walk myself through it. Like, you know what? Yeah, that's a really good question. You're a good interviewer all of a sudden. Made me just have a little epiphany <laughs> that life is yeah, good. I learned from the you know best, I mean? now. I learned that's from right, the baby. best. That's right, baby. We had fun, man. That was a good exercise. The uneducated opinion exercise, and you guys coming, y'all helped us. It was you definitely were, fun. It was a lot of. Were, fun. But how did you guys voice. get guests? Like that's my next question. How did you guys get guests? I was uh, on Anchor, right? Uh huh. And I would write other podcasters. And we got what Sam wanted to be in, be on there, and we had like that one dude that would just write us. Like I would, I would voice message them. That was what was cool. So it seemed like we had more guests because uh -huh. I was voice messaging people on the Anchor app, and then I'd kind of plug their show as I did it. Like I made sure to plug their show as I was like sending them a voice message. Uh -huh. And they put me on their show, and then they responded likewise. So I put them on my show. And I just put it in, like, the intros or whatever, you know. And, like, that one dude be like, your show, your podcast makes me laugh. It's pizza, bitch. <laughs> and, like, it just, that was one little snippet. And then Sam turned out to be crazy. He had, we thought he was funny because he had that, he had that uh, podcast where he's just on the toilet shitting. <laughs> it's like it's just him shitting on the toilet poo cast or poo cast or something like that and like, like you know what man maybe that was regrettable relationship 
<laughs> like, you don't know where this shit's going, man. You have no idea. But, uh, you know, me and Ross had, what, friends, so they would come on the show. We had so many people come by there. Plus, we had... Uh, it was amazing, too. Miss Jill, she came from the bar. Who? The location where you had it. Oh, yeah, the location. Yeah, Fish's house, period. Oh, so yeah. In fact, I I talked to him today. Um, I might end up storing my, my vehicle there until, like, I... I get a little extra money so I can ship that thing out for 900 bucks. But if I don't get it right away, I, I have, I have some money waiting for me in Oklahoma, but I'm spending a little money, you know, uh, making memories with the kid. Yeah. Try, trying to make some, like we went out to all kinds of shit. We went to the Saints game in Arizona. We went to the Padres stadium to watch the away game with the Phillies where we lost and shit. We're like, God damn. <laughs> like, fuck, dude. Yeah, no, that was interesting downtown, and then we trolleyed back, and this, we've just been doing stuff to make sure that uh, we have some new memories. I'm gonna see him in Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm gonna come back out here, so probably just, his her, his mom's leaving town, so that's why I have to be here. So I can basically stay at her place, so I have to pay for a hotel. And then uh, December, I'm gonna have him come out to Oklahoma for Christmas, show him the country. Hey, that place is country, and I like it. Mm. I'm liking how country it is. Yeah. I think after after being in San Diego for so long, the country is very, very appealing. Yes. You know, I like some of the countryside in Japan too, man. Like it's interesting, like their river parties and shit. Their camping parties that end up at a river and they you know, really fish some of that fish out and cook their you know, make a little fire right there next to the fucking river. I don't know if they really do that anymore. It's just kind of have do, a fucking they grill. Do. They do. They still do it right there because I live right next to the Tama River. So Okay, good. They, they do. They have the camping. They have the... Like the other day, I was walking around and they had like archers. You know. Oh yeah, the real ones, like them long ass bows. And yeah, shit. them long ass bows that's taller than them and they're like... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. They're big that. as fuck. That was a good sound effect. That was a real yeah. good sound effect, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I want to have some good ass Thai food today, bro. That's just so fire. I'm gonna be missing that one, man. Oh, Thai food. Uh, this, ye- this yellow curry. No, nobody make this yellow curry like this one place. Nobody else's yellow curry is like this place. I'm gonna have to come back to San Diego once a month to make sure I eat there. Period. This, that's just how it's going to have to go. Thai time. It's just called Thai time. I think they have three locations, but this is the only one I've ever been to. I've been to other Thai places and ordered the same exact thing. The texture's wrong. Everything's wrong. It's all, it's all wrong. You, would you ever go to Thailand? Yeah. I think I'm allowed there. Okay. You want to go meet up in Thailand? Fuck yeah. All right. Yeah. It's cheap once you get there, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Fuck yeah. Why not? Let's go do an adventure around Thailand once I go make some money in this fucking... Yeah, we'll make some, money, make some money in Oklahoma, then we, we, we do a link up in, in Thailand. We'll see how many people we can get to come come to Thailand. All right, bet. We'll do this when I'm in Oklahoma. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. I can't bring you with me, so it's over. <laughs> All right, Pippin. All right, bro. That's your boy. Hey, good talking to you. Always. Yeah. Peace. Be good. Try my best.